The use of a uh, tempered glass panel significantly changes airflow and fan requirements in the Cooler Master NR200P. In this video, let's check out how to best optimize airflow when using the tempered glass panel with this small form factor case. Hey, and welcome to Machines and More. In this video, I'm going to continue the discussion on optimal air cooling in the NR200 and the NR200P. I'll first cover higher powered GPUs in the NR200 and then I'll show the best configuration with the tempered glass panel. And since you'll definitely want to pick up a few extra fans for the NR200P, I'll show you some options that you might want to consider. It's been a little while since I first checked out optimal tower cooler airflow in the vented NR200. The findings are very interesting and the vented panel allows the builder to get decent results with uh, even just one top fan or two top fans when using a tower cooler in a rear exhaust position. As you might have seen in part one, a lower total board power graphics card like the 1660 Super uh, has less of a requirement to, to have bottom fans running in the bottom of the case. And you can easily run the vented panel NR200 with just top fans and the tower cooler in rear exhaust mode. Now the addition of bottom fans does help the GPU a tiny, tiny little bit, but you will want to get an additional two fans uh, for the bottom and then run the tower in rear intake to avoid a penalty on the CPU. While a big top-down cooler like the C14S yields very balanced thermals in this case, tower coolers are also an option too. And before jumping over to the tempered glass panel, I wanted to revisit the NR200 real quick with a higher powered GPU, just to give a recommendation there as well. With a higher powered GPU, the cooler might be capable of exhausting heat from the card, uh, but your case still has to get that exhausted air out of the vicinity of the card. Otherwise, it's just gonna slow cook itself in this bot, uh, ball of exhaust air here. If we take a look at the test with a 2070, which I have in this case now, which runs at about 175 watts, the rear intake uh, with bottom fans is a pretty good configuration. Uh, the bottom fans would help to ventilate the GPU while the CPU tower can take in the cooler air from the back of the case. This is especially important for a card like the 3080, which, um, especially the Founders Edition card, since the FE card puts its exhaust directly into the path of the tower cooler and this ball of exhaust here. In rear exhaust with bottom fans, the CPU is marginally higher, while there's an insignificant change for the GPU. Now, when I look at this data, my recommendation is, similar to the lower powered GPU scenario, you can get away with just running two top fans in conjunction with rear exhaust, since the thermals for the CPU don't necessarily benefit much, and the GPU only runs a couple degrees warmer without. Now you can go either rear exhaust or rear intake with the bottom fans, depending on your priorities. Um, personally, I do think that since the difference is so small, I would just stick with rear exhaust for the sake of dust management. Unless you're using the 3070, or the 3080FE or the 3090FE cards, then for sure you wanna run a rear intake uh, because you don't want the CPU tower taking in all that hot exhaust. The configuration you really wanna avoid though is running that rear intake without any bottom fans. So the NR200P gives you the option of either going with the vented panel or installing the tempered glass panel. Now, the glass panel lets you admire all the goodies inside, but it also means that the top-down cooler like the C14S, which was so amazing with a vented panel, is basically unusable in this case. And low-profile coolers aren't as effective with a running GPU and without a side panel fan. The best air cooling option for the tempered glass panel is a tower cooler. Uh, so the Noctua U12A returns again for this suite of tests. Now, I've, I've seen this question before, so let's address the elephant in the room. Does the Noctua U12A fit with a tempered glass panel? If it doesn't, we're not gonna have much fun here today with the testing, right? <laughs> Let's take a look. Hmm. It doesn't work with the clips alone. Uh, basically what's happening is the heat pipes are pushing up against the glass and flexing the motherboard a little bit. Now we can leverage the holes on the side panel uh, to gently hold the glass in place. So this is, I would take off the top, and if you take a look inside, uh, you can use this, a screw through the holes uh, on the side panel 
Uh, and you don't want to tighten it too much uh, because it might pull the trim away from the glass. Uh, but, and you don't need to tighten it too much. You just want to keep it from falling out. Um, it's not the end of the world. It's not perfectly flush, but at least it lets us uh, continue on with the configurations. And I do think it's fine to run that way long term anyway. Uh, the fans included with the NR200P are a little different from the NR200, which is actually quite nice. You get two of these sickle flow 120s instead of a 120 and a 92. I found the 92 a lot less useful than having two 120s, so this is a big plus for the P version. Now with the NR200P and the glass panel, this big open area that otherwise allows for cool air to circulate is closed off. So fan configuration and as you'll see fan count is critical to making this case work well. Now I'll say this up front, you will most likely want to get two additional fans for your case, but let's explore what you could do with just two fans first. For the results here, I'm running all case fans at 1000 RPM and the Noctua U12A at 2000 RPM. Uh, for the temperatures you'll see here for the two case fan tests, most motherboard uh, fan curves will put these fans at max anyway on the CPU cooler. So let's just stick with that 2000 RPM level for consistency. So here are a few variations. You can put the two case fans at the bottom, and you can put the two case fans at the top. In terms of raw CPU thermals, the rear intake is going to get you the best uh, arrangement, rather, regardless of if you put it on the top or the bottom. Now, none of these are what I would consider bad CPU thermals, since this is a 3700X locked at 4.2 gigahertz for a nine minute render. When you throw in the GPU, this is when things start to get interesting. Now I think that with any of these configurations, you're really between a rock and a hard place. While the rear intake heavily favors the CPU, the GPU temps are really high. Then when you consider the rear exhaust, the GPU thermals are better, but the CPU temps are pretty high. Now while these aren't levels that would cause throttling to happen, both your CPU and GPU will be able to clock higher frequencies when the temperatures are lower. Um, so in effect, you are throwing some performance away. Now personally, I don't like any of these configurations. Although you can clearly see that two fans at the bottom outperforms two at the top, regardless of tower configuration. The issue here is that without the vented side panel, ventilation is so cut off that the case is completely reliant on the case fans to move air. Uh, fans at the bottom means that the GPU is blocking off some of that airflow, right? Because the GPU is impeding the airflow of the fans. Um, and the fans at the top means that they're trying to draw air from the bottom panel, which is also still partly obscured from the GPU, right? So what you really need is for the air to be guided from one side to the other. Uh, and this Cooler Master NR200 really relies on that bottom to top airflow for circulation. So here I just threw in two of Cooler Master's Master Fan Halos to the top, and even CPU only thermals are improved significantly. Now when you look at the combined CPU and GPU testing, both CPU and GPU thermals are improved regardless of cooler orientation. And since both benefit so well, I really don't see a good reason to not run two additional fans. Now, Case fans don't add a lot of noise since they only have to run at about 800 to 1000 RPM for you to get meaningful improvements. Now, similar to the two fan configurations, uh, rear intake favors the CPU because it's able to take in cool air and rear exhaust favors the GPU. Now, normally I'd say for gaming scenarios, go ahead and pick the one that gives you the better GPU thermals. But if you look at the top two, rear exhaust runs the CPU 6.6 .6 degrees warmer and the GPU is only three and a half degrees cooler. Now that actually doesn't seem like a very good compromise. So what I would do in this scenario is just run rear intake with the CPU fans uh, dialed down a little bit and then I would just bump up the GPU fans. Um, you can still end up with a better result uh, for the GPU and still keep the same noise level. So that's the configuration I was testing for the 3080 testing as well. Since the C CPU gets severely hampered when your GPU choice gets up into that 250 to 300 watt range. Now you might experience more dust issues with this configuration since the rear panel isn't filtered. So keep an eye out and blow out your system every few months. Now interestingly, the temporary glass panel doesn't affect CPU thermals too much with the tower cooler. Mainly it's holding back the GPU from its best thermal performance. 
Since I think you'll want to pick up two extra case fans, let's talk about case fans for a little bit. Now, some PC fans, you might hear this term used a lot, uh, some PC fans are static pressure optimized, meaning they're more effective at moving air past obstacles. Now, typically you'll see uh, tighter blade spacing with these types of static pressure optimized fans like in the Arctic P12 and these would be what you want to put optimally at the bottom since a horizontal GPU blocks the fans and you're having to push past an obstacle. Uh, some fans are airflow optimized meaning they're more effective when moving air across open space. So these will typically have blades with more wide spacing like Noctua's S12A. The included sickle flow fans are kind of in the middle of general purpose fan and they work just fine on the bottom as well. So a cost effective way to plan out your build would be to stick these two fans at the bottom and then add two fans to the top. So I think the tempered glass panel is really all about the look. So maybe lighting is something you care about and you want to add to your system. And actually fans at the top is that's a perfectly good place to do that. Uh, Cooler Master sent by a few good options for us to check out and uh, I tested with the uh, Master Fan Halo 120s and, and they come in black and white and this is actually a pretty good choice. Uh, they're not terribly loud at a thousand RPM. They're pretty effective. Plus, the way the fans are shaped and the form factor really looks like it belongs and was designed for this case. All these rings of light, uh, plus the center that lights up, this is a real looker. And these are connected to your motherboard's addressable RGB header. And you would just daisy chain the two to get the signal to the other fan. A more powerful and lower cost fan option from Cooler Master is the Sickle Flow 120, the ARGB version, which isn't as flashy because uh, it just has a center that lights up, but it moves more air. The static pressure and airflow rating of this fan are higher than the Halo. Now, the other advantage of this fan is that you can have all of these, including the stock, the two stock Sickle 120s, uh, connected to the same header via an extra splitter, of course. And they will all run at the same RPM since they're essentially the same fan. Uh, you'll want to add another splitter because the included splitter uh, connects to three fans, so you'll need an, a two-way splitter to get you to the fourth fan. Now, oddly enough, when I check prices on Amazon, uh, the ARGB version is cheaper than the black uh, non-lighted version. So even if you didn't want lighting, you may as well just get the ARGB version and never co connect the lighting. Corsair also makes some decent RGB fans, but I feel like they're priced too aggressively to recommend for this case. At the end of the day, these are just case fans running at a moderate RPM, so there's really no need to go overboard. If you're not a fan of RGB, that's fine too. Uh, for non-RGB options, I can recommend Noctua's S12A for the top. They're airflow optimized and the Chromax version also gives you some colorful bits so you can personalize your system a little bit. Uh, they're very quiet and are perfect as top fans in this case. Now, Arctic's P12s are great too, as long as you don't go into that 1200 to 1300 RPM zone. And at that point, a strange growl appears in the noise pattern. Uh, you could stick the P12s at the bottom since they're best for static pressure and then run the stock sickle flow 120s at the top since they're, they'll be fine at the bottom or the top, but these will be better at the bottom. And lastly, Noctua's Redux line is also a fantastic option too. The P12 Redux is a solid, solid static pressure fan that I've used in a lot of testing, and it's fairly inexpensive also. As much as I like these NFA 12x25s, I think it's a bit excessive to spend more on this fan only to run it at a low RPM. Now they're just as quiet at 800 and 1200 RPM, but the reality is you don't need to run case fans more than 1000 RPM to get this case to perform well. So in summary, the NR200P comes equipped almost ready to rock, but my strong recommendation is to add on two fans of your choice and then run that tower cooler in the rear intake configuration to prioritize the CPU and allow the bottom fans to help the GPU work well. Now I hope you've enjoyed exploring optimal airflow again with me, this time on the NR200P. Uh, next up, I'm taking a look at five different sub $50 tower coolers at various price points, uh, including the Scythe Mugen 5. So there will be good choices to show everyone. If you found the content helpful, please help support the channel out by using the links down below if you're picking up something from what I've discussed today. And make sure you're subscribed to get notified on all the updates here at Machines and More. Have a good one, and I'll see all of you again soon.